Yeah. So listen, you you can get things done. Um, the most valuable thing though, that you get when, when you're on, when you've got the players here that you can't get virtually is, uh, the on-field experience and being able to teach, uh, uh, Willie Gay coming in as a rookie, um, how to move and uh, drop and your fundamentals and techniques, the different coverages that he's got to take care of, run fit responsibilities. Uh, when you're not hands-on, it's hard to walk through those things. Uh, and so um, you end up retarding the, the, um, th- the first, first year player, second, third year player a bit uh, by having, uh, by only being able to do it virtually, you know, that, that's, uh, that ends up being a bit of an issue. The other part comes in is being able to put new things in. <clears throat> so <clears throat> without exhausting it, and again, w- without coaches taking advantage of situations, I think that's also important, but you're, you're able to give, um, uh, give the players some new thoughts that through all the scheme eval that you discuss with them, uh, hey, listen, let's try this and let's just take a look at it. Let's see, let's see what it looks like. If it's no good, we can throw it out there rather than wasting time during training camp going over. Yeah. So I gave them an idea of how we were, how it was going. I mean, things got kind of finalized right here at the end. Um, but I, you know, I, I trust our guys are going to work out and get that, that part done. Uh, I trust that they're going to be on the, the calls for right now, which I think is important. I mean, we can go over this whole scheme eval and you know how much time we spent on that, Saran. I mean, we endlessly, uh, endless hours on that thing, just trying to make it right. And, and, uh, and so um, I think that's important. Um, And that's uh, the crawl before you walk uh, when hopefully you're able to get the guys in a, in one of the other phases. But for right now, this ends up being the most important thing um, as we move forward. Yeah. And then from a left tackle perspective, I know you don't have to turn around and play uh, tomorrow, but, you know, who would be the guys that would be in the mix? I know you value flexibility. You talked about Long's flexibility, but who are some of the guys that right now you look at and say they'd be in the mix to play left tackle if you did that? Yeah, we're fitting that through, but we, you know, we had aspirations of potentially moving Yang over uh, to that spot. Um, He looked like he had some potential for that when we had him last um, obviously Kyle has that, uh, flex to be able to do something like that. He's played inside too. I mean, the majority of the time he played inside, but he wasn't bad on the outside either. So, <clears throat> and then we've got guys coming back. So whether it's rim or whether, you know, whether it's Andrew, we've got guys that have uh, also have flexibility to play in those spots. We'll go last to Sam Mellinger. Go ahead, Sam. Hey, Andy. Uh, good to see you. All right, so, uh, Brad, I've got uh, just a quick housekeeping thing and then kind of a more of a question. First, Andy, do, do you have a sense for how many of your players or staff uh, have been vaccinated? I do. There, there's a listen, I'm, I'm giving you approximates now. So sure. don't, um, there, there's approximately 18 that have been vaccinated. The staff will have an opportunity to do that um, starting tomorrow. Um, right now, there's a handful of them that have already been vaccinated myself included. I think the more we can push towards that, I think that's a positive. You know, I think giving people an opportunity to do it, I think is great um, <clears throat> as we move forward, you know, so um, I, I just, anyways, that, that's my own, listen, that's my own thought on it. I, and I, want, I don't want anybody to get sick and, and I surely don't want anybody to pass away. So um, I think in certain situations, a vaccine becomes important. We've seen it um, you know, from the polio era on through that things, things have taken place where it's helped us as humans here, uh, move forward. So I, I put that right, right there. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks. Um, and then the other two and a half months removed from your last game, I, I know the answer is probably both, right. But how much of what happened offensively was how beat up you were up front and how much of that was, you know, sort of what the Bucks were doing themselves strategically that may be sort of a blueprint, if you will, for, for teams next season. Yeah, sure. The Bucks did a nice job. I mean, they came out and played zone coverage and, you know, the pretty, pretty standard stuff. Um, they played their tail off, did a great job. Uh, you know, my hat goes off to them. They were better than we were that day. Um, uh, I've said before, you, you know, injuries can 
you know, they, they can do things just to the continuity of things and mix it up a bit. And you, you hope you go into that game uh, healthy, I, you know, but uh, that didn't happen. So you go do your best. We plug guys in and let's go. Let's go play and let the chips fall where they may. They didn't fall in our direction. Um, but listen, I'm not going to take anything away from the job that they did. And I'm certainly not putting the blame on anybody uh, for our game. We, we, we need to get better, obviously. I mean, they're, they're, they were the better team that day. So we, we've got a nice goal there to, sh to shoot for. <clears throat> Coach, we really appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us. Okay, thank you, guys. I appreciate you. All right, guys. Well, Patrick, uh, coming your way here in a few minutes.